is the uh, the Ann Arbor Public Market Advisory Meeting for April 15th, and the time is 5.31. Uh, let's start the meeting. Roll call, please. All right. Peter Wolf. I'm here. Lisa Young. Present. Jeff Namath. Here. Helen Chandler. And Holly Parker are absent. Or, oh, oh, Holly's there right there. <laughs> Saved by the bell. <laughs> Hello, Holly. All right, so Holly is here too. Hi, Holly. Hi there. My dog's joining as well. But I see, yes. <laughs> Looks content. Yes. Good thing we built that window seat for him. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry that I missed the meeting last time. Stephanie, thank you for sending out that email. I just um, got it too late and had, was just living in Wednesday that entire day. And then I saw your email and realized it was actually Thursday. So sorry about that. I was really sad to miss it. It's okay. I mean, being virtual, we don't even know what day it is really anymore, any of us. So, yeah, time is meaningless. Yes. All right. Um, so, we can move on to the approval, approval of the agenda. Actually, one thing to note for those people that are listening in, I can see that things are lag between the video, you see, and the phone. So, if you are listening in on the phone, then uh, listen to only that one versus the YouTube one, because that one is delayed by about a minute between this. So I know people have said they're confused. So just giving people a heads up because we're going to have some commentary possible coming soon. So. And but, sorry, Jeff, I had to mute you because it was getting a little garbled and I couldn't oh. hear what Peter was saying. But feel free to unmute yourself. To speak. Oh, can you hear me now? Okay, good. So the issue is that. Um, I, some people have mentioned that the people who've called in have a delay relative to what the YouTube video has. So just to make a note that the, we're gonna, we'll have a public commentary now, but if you are, someone is listening right now, then they should go through and only listen to the phone that's the live one, not the YouTube one, because that will be delayed. And if you try to speak when that comes up, you'll find that you get missed. Um, so just so you have a, a heads up for that. And we'll have two points for that one for public commentary on agenda items, another one for non-agenda items. So again, if you're on the phone, listen on the phone, not on the YouTube video. So if you wanna make a comment. All right, so uh, uh, item C, approval of agenda. You should have all received the previous agenda from the previous meeting um, and had a chance to look at also the video was online too for uh, kind of review for that. Um, so if there are any changes or suggestions for that, any modifications, does that seem okay? Is there a motion to approve? Sorry, Peter, are we doing the agenda or the minutes? We're doing the, the agenda. For oh, this sorry, meeting. Agenda. Yes, I actually, where are the minutes? Oh yes, they're previous, sorry, yes. I apologize, I was reading ahead. So item C, approve of agenda, this agenda, yes. Thank you. Motion to approve. Is there a second? I second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, it passes. Okay, item D, uh, first public commentary, which these are just on agenda items only, and this will be via the phone, I guess. So, Stephanie? Okay, let's see if we have anybody who wants to participate. Hello, are you interested in participating in our public comment? I'm gonna say that's a, a no. And then another one. Hello there, are you interested in participating in our public comment? If so, you may unmute yourself. Trying to wait a little extra time, just in case. Hello? Hello? Hello, would you like to participate in public comment? 
I don't think I want to participate in the pub public comment. All right. Uh, I've never done this before, so I don't know. I don't. No know worries. What the heck I'm... You can just sit and listen. <laughs> no worries. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to assume that that is uh, no commentary, at least at the moment. All right. So no comments for item D. So moving on to item E, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. So this is what we were talking about. So the previous meeting from uh, whatever, March, um, you should have received the minutes for that. And are there any comments or suggestions or changes from that? Stephanie, I was just wondering if we could add in some of the key issues that we brought up during our discussions um, with uh, uh, Hillary uh, in terms of the winterizing plan. Um, and I'm trying to remember some of the issues that came up and I don't remember all of them, but I, one of them was they were thinking about uh, feasibility studies and talking to the vendors. And one of the things that um, I asked for is just um, thinking about a, a timeline if we can't just keep this marching down the road if we could you know can there be discussions with the vendors sometime in the next few months rather than waiting till um the winter or the end of the growing season that that sort of thing um you know i'm glad everything's still on the table but they said you know that was a conceptual design and they wanted to get vendor comment and public comment and then go into the redesign and and so just thinking about if we could keep that moving along and that they could keep us informed regularly on the time schedule for doing that yep i can add that no problem great were there other comments or changes people had all right so with that change then is there a motion to approve Motion to approve. Is there a second? A second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. So then moving on um, to regular business items, agenda items. Stephanie. Okay. All right. So the really big one um, is we've been in talks with the city. Uh, the context is because of all the loss of revenue um, due to the pandemic, um, my supervisors, as well as citywide, um, they're doing a 5% reduction of the budget across the board. Um, and for us, we have made the determination. And again, this is just a recommendation. This has not been passed. This has not gone through yet. Um, but we made a recommendation to raise the vendor fees as well as the parking fees. Um, I have a graphic I can show you in a minute, but I'll just give you a little bit of the background on it. Um, we did a lot of research on what other markets around the area are charging, ones that are both comparable size, ones that are also run by city organizations, as well as ones that are smaller, um, you know, not year round, stuff like this. Um, so we did extensive research and we also have not raised the fees since 2015. Um, and in our research, we found out that, you know, we're actually a lot cheaper um, than comparable markets locally. And we felt like it would be the easiest um, to raise the fees as well as the parking fees so that it wouldn't impact any other operational aspects. We wouldn't have to cut any other delivery um, for the market. And with that said, I will share my screen and show you um, the little comparison document I put together. Just give me one second. All right, here it is. Can everybody see that? Yeah, okay. So um, as you can see, here we are at the top. The top box is what our current fees are and the um, proposed changes are in the second box. I should also say this does not go into effect until fiscal year 2022. So this does not impact fees this year whatsoever. Um, the only potential exception is our people that pay our daily fee, um, but all daily vendors do have the option to pay annually. Um, so again, you know, this will not be going into effect for our annual vendors until um, fees are due next June 30th, 2022. So that's the first thing. We're not doing this in the middle of the pandemic. 
we are just planning well in advance. Um, so it's not a big surprise for next year. But for this current um, fiscal year, payments are the same. Um, those have not been raised as of yet. Um, but so you can see our daily fees are right here, $30 a day. Um, and again, we are year round. So that's why it says January to December. And our parking fee is $5. Keep in mind that parking is optional and it is also $5 per space. And this is just for daily fees. So hold that thought. Um, and then annual vendor fees. These are folks that are paying for their uh, stalls all up front. And it gets a little confusing because annual and daily status don't necessarily correspond with people's seniority, although sometimes they do because all annual vendors do pay annually, but some of our dailies also pay annually. So I know that's a little bit confusing. So with that said, you can see current fees, one stall 450, two stalls 950, three stalls 1500, four stalls 2200. Um, it's important to note that there's very few vendors that have four stalls. Um, there's only about three. Um, and the vast majority of people at the market have two and one, although there are folks like Jeff that do have three as well. Um, this is our average number of market days for this current year, 86, 52 Saturdays, 34 Wednesdays. Um, and this is just sort of our average um, visitors throughout the season, it's really hard to gauge, right? Because so many months are very, very different than each other. Um, and there's a range there. So that's the range there, but it, it could be very different depending on the time of year, of course. Um, so then if you move down here, we see the proposed fees. So you can see that this comes across as basically a, an 11% increase. And the reason we chose that sort of strange number was so that it would be a manageable increase, right? So instead of $30 per day, it's now $35 per day, right? We figured that would be easier. You don't have to make change um, in the same way if it was like $33 or something like that. Um, so that's why we chose that. And that would mean that the stalls would go up like this. So 450 would become 500, 950 would become 1055, um, 1500 would become 1665 and 2200 would be 2442 because across the board, it's this 11% um, increase. And the other thing too, um, parking would be going up. But again, keep in mind, parking is always optional. Um, $5 a day would become $6 a day. 100 for the year, it would, be coming, uh, would become 120 for the year. Um, and as I will just scroll down, scroll down to give you a little bit of comparison, um, this is how we stack up to Ypsilanti Farmers Market, right? Ipsy Market. Um, $20 a day for their Saturday market, $15 a day for their Tuesday market. Um, much, much smaller market in terms of volume, open way less hours um, throughout the year. Uh, here's Detroit Eastern market. You could see um, a little bit of a bigger market than us, also year round, however, um, but you can see comparatively how we stack up um, that we are quite a bit cheaper um, depending on, the, but their categories are a little different. Um, so it's hard to compare exactly because a lot of times they, the, this dealer, right, would be somebody who's not, a, not themselves the grower uh, or producer, whereas we don't allow that, of course. Um, and if you go down further, I just have the breakdown of all their different categories, food truck categories, artisans, they have different fees for everybody. Ours is much more uh, streamlined. Um, and then here's the Flint Farmer's Market, another year round market, um, but they happen three days a week, actually, um, and you can see their schedules. So they are Tuesday, Thursday, $25 a day, Saturday, $45 a day. Uh, and these are for their outdoor stalls, which would be comparable to us. So you can see that they're, they're higher um, in their costs and they get comparable amounts of traffic, maybe a little bit more than us. Um, and then you can just go down from there. Oakland County, you can see um, they have sort of their outside annual fee, just one flat fee of $18.50. Um, and they are also, I believe, Saturday year round, and then they do have a Tuesday, Thursday market. Also, um, Allen Farmers Market in Lansing, much smaller market again. Um, and then I just tried to do whatever ones I could find data about, um, you know, Dexter Market, also much smaller than us and then other markets around the state. Muskegon is a big market on the west side. And if you notice a star 
that means it is run by a government entity as well. So for example, Dexter um, is run by the, I believe it's the village of Dexter. Um, and then of course us, and there's other ones around, um, but I did not have all the data. I believe Oakland County is run by the County of Oakland. Yeah, here's the story right there. So, and I can also send this document to you by email as well, if I'm going to. Is everybody good or can I, can I stop the share or do you want to look at it more? I appreciate you're putting that together. That really helps because it does get a, you know, putting some data to the comparison is, it's not just speculation, it's actual information. Yeah. So I appreciate you're putting that together. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's helpful to see it side by side for sure. Okay, well, I'm gonna stop the share. Yeah, I think that was good. I think all that definitely makes sense in my opinion. I guess I'm curious too as to have you heard any thoughts about what the impact of the vendor fee increase would be. Would it I, any I don't know if it's a big thing or not for these folks? Is that a question for Jeff? Or how I don't know. It? It's for the everyone. I don't know. I, I, I'm not on that side of it, so I don't know how big of an impact that is. Yeah. I don't I don't see it being an, an issue. I can't speak for everyone, but I can speak for myself and it's not an issue. Helen, do you have any feedback? Seeing that you do, you go to a bunch of other markets. Do you have a, a good idea? Um, I feel similarly to Jeff. Um, it, and as long as it's like merited, you know, it's just running the market. It's what it costs and stuff. And the comparison is very helpful. So, cool. It's shared with the the all the vendors. Or are you bringing it to us to vote on? Or what's the process, Stephanie, for, for moving this forward? And, and I guess, do all the vendors get a chance to view it and react as well? Yeah, I was bringing it to you all first, and then I was going to release it to everybody else just to get you know feedback and such. Because as I said, you know, at the end of the day, city council is the one voting on it. Um, so you know, we can give our best intentions, but they might not be in favor of it. So. Um, but this is our proposal and I know that it has been presented to city council um, as part of their working session last week and it will be presented to the parks commission uh, next Tuesday I believe. So who came up with the amount of increase? Is that something that the city approached you with or? Yeah they needed a five percent um, budget cut across the board. Okay so is it, this is money that's going to go back into parks. This isn't money for the market. It's money for the market. Yeah, it's oh, our specific budget. Okay. Yeah. All right. yep. I just want to clarify. Yeah, that. how they work. They need a five percent cut, but then they ask each park's location to do five percent ourselves, and then as a collective, it would be five percent across the board. But yes, this is specifically funding that would go directly gotcha. to the market, just like all other vendor fees. Yeah, I mean, especially if we're going to do stuff like winterization and, and what everything we've been talking about, it's just everything else, everything just goes up. It's inflation. I mean, it hasn't gone up, like you said, since 2015. So probably, probably do. Yeah. Cool. Anyone else? Yeah, so just to answer your question, Holly, this is just sort of a, you know, first presentation that this conversations we're having, first step, then we're going to go and get vendor input um, from a, in a broader sense. And then I'm sure once it goes back to council, um, they'll have all that information to, to, in their voting process. But that's all I had on that item for the time being. Looks good, really thoughtful and um helpful to have, as everyone has said, to have all that comparison data. So thank you. Thanks. I wish I could have gotten more really, but you know, with COVID it's kind of hard to contact everybody, but thanks to the magic of the internet, I was able to find a lot of that stuff. Yes. Without, because I tried to reach out to Michigan Farmers Market Association, but they don't keep any records about that. Um, so 
I thought it would be a little easier than it was, but I'm glad that was helpful. Definitely, thank you. Yep. All right, then moving on to item two, market bathrooms renovation project update. All right, so market uh, bathrooms are under renovation. Um, I know it's kind of funny. It's a, it's a, it's sort of a test to see who reads their email. The people that come in and do a, a double take and then go right back out. Um, but yeah, it, I was over there this morning. There's a pile, pile of rubble. It's moving along. Um, we have been, of course, we have portable toilets in the parking lot, uh, and then we do have our hand washing sinks back now that it's warm enough. Um, and not to mention that we had the plumber re uh <clears throat> reconfigure the the water so that we do actually have water inside of the market but we don't have water in the market office building so good news is plant season is here so people can water their stuff um and wash their hands uh even though the the bathrooms continue to be closed until that project is completed but it's really exciting update i know <laughs> excellent it's good news it's important <laughs> The central yes. infrastructure. Yes. All right. Any comments on that? Any people have? We should move on. All right. Then moving on to item three, market COVID protocols continue. All right. Well, I know this was a question last time, so I just wanted to formally include it uh, in the agenda. You know, unfortunately, Michigan is in the news for all the wrong reasons right now uh, as a COVID hotspot. Um, so we did make the choice a few weeks ago um, to not just continue what we're doing with our protocols from last year, but we have also decided to suspend any new applicants um, being let into the market. There are two people that are sort of have been in the process before we made that decision. Um, but other than them, we're putting a full moratorium and any new applicants till at least the late summer, early fall. Um, the reason we did this was that we want to make sure all vendors, especially annual vendors, have the stalls that they pay for, um, and we are trying not to have to limit the amount of total stalls people have this year, and we figured in order to be able to do that and be distant, um, there was no way that we could um, bring on new folks at this time. <clears throat> um, and then the other fun thing, we are easing back into events events um nothing like they've been in the past um but we will be bringing back flower day in the end of may um but much pared down you know no fancy food trucks only vendors that are at the market we're not inviting other people from outside in this year we're not doing food trucks you know we're having maybe one person there to teach about invasive species of plants um but that's all and we're working in collaboration with the artisan market um but as of right now like that's sort of our foray back into events, but, you know, given what's going on right now, that's probably all we're going to be doing for the foreseeable future until things get safer again. Give a benchmark on what that safer means. I mean, I think we're all dreaming about the fall and, you know, <laughs> could there be maybe a few, few food trucks in the, in the fall or something like that? I mean, I don't expect a concrete answer now, but again, thinking about how those decisions go. Yeah, well, we're following all guidance from Michigan Farmers Market Association, um, and, as well as the city. And the city was going to open at the end of April, but now with the spike, they have even pushed that back. Um, so, you know, I don't anticipate anything like that happening. But with that said, we have been inviting food trucks as there is space to a regular market day uh, as sort of our compromise. But again, you know, as market gets full, that's not going to be possible on Saturdays, although Wednesdays um, we will be uh, attempting to do that. But yeah, pretty much listening to the city, listen, listening to the local health department, listening to Michigan Farmers Market Association and going on their recommendations for when they think it's safe for those events. And I'm thanks. We'll just keep dreaming for the fall. <laughs> exactly. That's all we can do. And I'm curious about the the moratorium on new vendors for during COVID. Is and you said there are two vendors that were kind of in process. Has there been a lot of demand beyond that, or is that pretty light? Yes, we've had to turn away quite a few people, um, but you know that's the the nature of that's how it goes. And not everybody would have been a good fit anyway, so you know it, it works fine. 
but yeah, lots of lots of interest, as always. That's a good thing. Yep, <laughs> good problem to have for sure. And Stephanie, just thinking again to the the future when there's the the vendor move up day that mm -hmm. was paused last year, uh, and it's at the end of the summer. Am I remembering right? Um, yeah, end of August. And just thinking about um, what are the plans uh, for that moving forward, since that's the other thing that is jockeying. You know, who's an annual, who's a daily, all that. Sure. Um, we haven't made any final decisions as of yet. Um, how we did it last year, as you know, is we had two spots available. So we just added, you know, the first two people at the top of the list. Um, there were a few people that did retire last year. Um, so we might do that again, just the, you know, as there is space, but might not necessarily do the whole thing. But um, again, we just really need to see how things go this summer um, and see, you know, make sure people's needs are met right now. Um, but yes, we have not made a decision in either direction yet. So how many how many stalls are available? Um, who retired last year? Uh, the Rumples did. Um, and we haven't heard anything from the native plant nursery. So I'm assuming that he retired because we've contacted him uh, multiple times and have not heard back. Um, right. And yeah, so those would be the two vendors that retired. And then everyone else got their application in and everything so far. So we're good there, right? For the most part, yeah. Or, you know, it got lost in the mail or we worked with them. Yeah. So those are really the only people that, you know, we we don't, yeah, they're they're not, they're done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We just try to keep up on that yep. as a group here so we know what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's hard. I don't even know what's going on half the time. Just <laughs> kidding. Yes, I do. But um, you're right. There's a lot of moving pieces. All right, are there any other comments on the uh, items there people have before we move on? All right, seeing none, uh, then we'll move to, on to item H, new business, non-agenda items. Does anyone have any new business to add to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to item J, which is the second public comment, Stephanie. All right, I see a hand. All right. Boss man, <laughs> you may unmute and speak. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Lawrence Donahue, otherwise known as Duke. Um, I, I don't know. I, this is the first time I've ever done this. Usually I uh, have my secretary help me with this. I'm not computer savvy, so um, I don't fine. know if this is the appropriate time to, uh, is it? For public comment, or is that at the end, or I don't. This is public that. comment. You're you're good. So, holler back at me then. It's right now. You can keep going. Oh, it is right now. Yeah. Okay. Sorry if that was unclear. All right. Well, as as is Stephanie, as you're well aware of the situation that um, we were confronted with this, or I was confronted with this week on the. Um, the uh, surprise inspection, and um, you had sent back the email to me um, regarding the uh, surprise inspection. Mm -hmm. and you checked in the rules that it was confirmed that um, there was nothing um, in in the past. Um, yep. I wasn't I wasn't contacted. Uh, they just showed up at the door, mm -hmm. and. I'm just trying to verify it. I, I'm kind of not not new with the market, obviously, but new with the rules and some of the rules and how you guys' procedures work. My dad obviously retired and some back on it, but he had always said that anything changes or how operations change at the market, it's supposed to be handled through the advisory committee or something before it's taken action. Um, anybody else can question me I might be correct or incorrect on some of this I don't know but I had a letter here from December 12th of 2018 from Stephanie how the procedure was for if there was a vendor um, mm -hmm. if there was a concern or somebody went to the market officer saying that they didn't feel that that product was grown by the vendor um, mm -hmm. obviously I, I can't show everybody but sure um, 
it's dated December 12, 2018 vendor update regarding market inspection. And it talks about the same simple thing of um, improving their system to keeping everybody on the same track mm -hmm. of not buying and selling that there would be uh, table inspections previous to the inspector going out on the two year program, two year inspection. And then if mm -hmm. there was additional concerns that was brought to the market management um, at any other time, it would be reviewed. And then there would be a, uh, in a legitimate concern that the market management had a legitimate concern that they would schedule an on-site inspection with the next day or two, which mm -hmm. I, I don't have any, I'm not opposed to it. Um, sure. I have nothing to hide. I mean, I, no, I mean, you um, pass with flying colors. I, I agree. Um, yep. And that leads kind of to the question that uh, the first of the beginning of last week, prior to starting back to the market after being off the market for over six weeks, probably, or whatever mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm and coming in earlier this year with all the pickles and cucumbers, zucchini and so on and so forth that I had, I had uh, spent a great deal of time with myself and my secretary update my website and Facebook mm -hmm. and um, forwarded it over to you and asked the request to uh, um, make customers or somehow share mm -hmm. with customers uh, sure. that we were going to be coming back so that it would try to draw more attention to other to customers that's not going to normally be there for yep. the simple fact of cucumbers. And um, I don't see where anything of that got materialized. And um, I guess the other question is about this inspection. I thought that um, and my dad kept telling me that it's got to be revised by the, the committee. And in your return letter back to me, it, it said things change. Um, that's how it may, uh, Hang on one second. Let me see here. Mm -hmm. Your exact words in your email back to me. I understand that as I understand that changing the way we do things from how it was done in the past may not be what you are used to, but I assume we were going to have the best interest of the vendors and the market at heart. So I mm -hmm. see two issues there. Um, I don't, I don't see where we're following the rules or at least allowing vendors to understand that you can just come out to my farm at any given time without a phone call. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot more issues that are involved with that. It could be spray issues, animal issues. Uh, for example, instance, the inspector did not even show up at the applicant's property that is on the application. Tuesday, she showed up over at my dad's, and then my dad had directed her over to the to me, which is my operation and business name is on the market application, and that was clarified a year ago with the market and the inspector when I was inspected from Jan uh, over a year ago. Um, in the best interest of the vendors and the market at heart, wouldn't that be to advertise? for us growers that are bringing something in in the middle of April when well, nobody else on um, earth has it? Yeah, I can answer that one question. One is that we're very short staff now. It's just myself and Becky. Um, and I was, I had every intention of doing that on Saturday was unable to um, because market was incredibly busy uh, and there was just the two of us. So that was not anything that was intentional. And I planned on actually doing a nice showcase for this week coming up. Um, the second one is, as you can see from the document that I shared with you, there was no change in policy, as there is actually nothing explicitly that states that inspections must be scheduled in advance. I checked the rules that, that that's not in there. Um, so I think that is what he was referring to in terms of things that need to be changed in the policy and coming before this body, if it was actually in writing, stating that that was not the thing that you could do, that's what would need to be changed. And there was nothing like that in um, the particular rules that I could find. Um, again, Stephanie Willett, I can't speak to her policy um, when she was in there because again, you know, she was not involved really in my training process whatsoever. And things have been very different um, due to yeah. COVID. Yeah. So I apologize, you know, if it was upsetting to you, but I think personally, um, given the circumstance, 
we kind of felt like we had to do what we did. And then the upside of it is that I think it will finally quiet a lot of the grumblings that have happened in the past from customers and other vendors um, about your product now that we know for a fact um, that you did in, in, in fact grow all that stuff um, that you had at market on Saturday. But that, that, doesn't, that doesn't really constitute anything because that's just pickles and cucumbers. So when I well, it's tomatoes. it's entire. I mean, it's it's a voter. You know, it's a vote of confidence in favor of your operation. Is what I'm saying. And in but I, I guess I'm really at a loss and confusion because we have been coming to that market for the last ten years with the same product in the middle of April or beginning of May. So I'm two weeks ahead of the game, and I'm going to come to market with cauliflower, broccoli, tomatoes, and all this other stuff as it starts progressing a lot sooner than it normally does. So you're going to be knocking on my door every time? No, certainly not. As I said, you passed the inspection. So why would we go back and do that? Well, because of every different product, um, every different product that is comes onto the market at this. I mean, like I, I showed. No, I mean, it was because I don't have anything to hide. It's just a matter of. For, of course not. It was simply because. I, I don't know that it's. How is it this going to be handled? I mean the. The market manager prior to said, and I don't know if, um, well, Jeff's a vendor. He's, a, he's well, Jeff's a vendor, and uh, I forget what Gail's name there, the Daily Gale that I think is on the meeting here right now, that they recall this letter from Stephanie in the procedure of how she handled if there was a, a surprise or a spot check or an event for that week that somebody had an, an, an issue with. So I do I do recall that. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. I do recall I you know I didn't it's been a while, but she did send that out. And I do recall um some conversation on the board committee here about the inspections. And I want to say that anytime there was a question that there was supposed to be a to the best of my recollection, I, without looking it all up, you know, word for word, I believe it was you're supposed to in, uh, schedule an inspection within two days with the farmer to, to look at everything. Um, I can't speak for everyone else because maybe I just never heard of it, but in the whole 46 years, probably 38 of them, which I can remember, um, I've never heard of a surprise inspection but I'm not saying that it's not allowed or there's a reason for it, but I mean, I've never heard of it. Um, so I guess it, it would probably be something that should be looked into and, and talked about. Here's the, um, the copy from the public market operating rules. As you can see, inspection of vendors, um, as you can see, it's A through H. There's nothing in here that explicitly states anything about that. Again, if that was a policy that Stephanie herself made and did not update the rules and did not communicate with me, um, I apologize, but I was not aware um, that that was something that was ever discussed because I only have access to the, the rules. As you, as you see here, there's nothing stating that it must be scheduled in advance. Okay, but I'm just saying that Duke does have some valid points as far as when it's not, is textbook as everyone thinks as far as a lot of us have a lot of stuff going on. In other words, we're talking multiple properties, rental property, all which of it is on our application. So for her to just come out and think that she's gonna, you know, it's not like the movies where we got a little farm, little 10 acre patch and we're just hanging out here in the lawn chair. Um, you know, we might be gone for the day. We might be gone getting seed potatoes mm -hmm. on the west side of the state. Sure. And the, dog, and the dog might be in the yard or maybe we just sprayed the greenhouse and uh, some of that stuff's pretty, you know, you, you know, you got five days, 10 days till yep. harvest. And then she's in there with all them chemicals. Um, there's just, it's not, not that anyone has any, not that he had anything to hide. He's a perfect example right there yep. because didn't. he mm -hmm. didn't. And yep. he's, still, he's still taking time to bring this up to us. So that, that should make everyone think a little bit, you know, that it's not that there's anything to hide. It's just a fact of a courtesy and convenience of, yeah, hey, listen, you got two days for me to come out or maybe we need to schedule something for tomorrow. 
and then give the farmer the opportunity. Hey, I'll be around in the afternoon or, Hey, let's get do it first thing in the morning. That way it's just, it's, it's just a convenience factor. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say she came out and let's say, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Duke, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So she went to your dad's first, correct? Yes. Okay. And that's he was home. Consi that's considered more or less a rental property because that's not the main operation on the application. Mine, mine business name is in my address. And where, and where are the, where are the pickles in the cute in the uh, zucchini? Is that at your place? Yeah. Yeah. It's at my place. Okay. So let's suppose no one was there to direct her over to your place. She would just write down in her notes that she didn't find any cucumbers in, in zucchini. So you know, I mean, it's just, it's just not real effective, I guess, is what I'm saying. Sure. And I think the reason that we did it, it was a special case situation, given the seasonality of everything. I mean, and again, the reason is we had customer inquiry, you know, and we figured that was the way to do it. And moving forward, of course, we're not going to do this regularly, but we do reserve the right to do it if necessary. And I did invite, um, to tell me, you know, if there's anything that he had an issue with or he had questions about, we would, of course, reserve the right to do this for other folks. Because again, really, it's all about making sure that everyone's following the producer only rule. And we hate that we have to do it at all. Like we hate that we have to do any inspections because we wish that everybody was just consistently producer only. But, you know, knowing the nature of the market, that's just not possible. Um, and I hear what everyone's saying and I appreciate it and I'm sorry if it caused a hardship, but given the situation and given what the rules state, um, I did not think that there was anything saying that we could not um, do what we did. In well, that's the thing. I mean, the rules are pretty broad. I don't see, sure. I mean, it says a two year inspection. That's all the rules really talk about is a two year inspection. It says and at it, least. So. At least. Okay. Yeah. And it doesn't say it doesn't really say any there that we can come in and spot check or we can just a NAM or what you call it um, surprise inspection, which I'm not not opposed to because as a grower, if I produced and brought what I brought to market on Saturday, there is no way in hell I could show up or you could show you couldn't you could I could delay you for three weeks. And I still couldn't produce enough plants, cucumber plants, to show you that I brought that many cucumbers on that market day. Well, that's why it you know, says later. You know, times that are reasonable for the products listed in, in um, bullet point C. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you I, see bullet point C, it says they should be conducted at times that are reasonable for the various products listed. I think so, Duke's point, I think Duke's point, Duke's point is, Making it a surprise didn't change anything because his point is, even if he said, even if she came out a week later, if he wasn't growing the stuff, he would have had sure. no way to replicate that. So mm -hmm. his point is, it, 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 nothing was achieved by her just showing up. Right. That's all he's saying. He's saying I there's no that. way. And yeah. I guess it all boils down to the yeah. fact of how you're operating the rules or how you're perceiving it. I mean, I, I'll bring this letter that Stephanie- Please do. I, this is the first I've heard of it. So I would like to see that. Please bring it. Yeah, I will. I'll bring it on Saturday because that's what it, and it, it just, and it's a many, it, this is not the first time that you have said this, things are changing or things have changed as I, you had stated. And I, I remember well, last season when I COVID, extended I this, uh, onto a stall at 11 or 12 o'clock in the afternoon when the other vendor left and you would come to me and say, what are you doing? Why'd you do that? And I said, well, the other vendor left and that was a normal procedure, how we always done things. This is how we've always done, how it's always done That's... in the past. Well, this is not how I operate. So- No, I no, 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 no. That's not, that's, that's out of context. I was said that that's what I was told by the previous market manager. That was not something that I created. No, not at all. And that okay. must just be a miscommunication because that's, well, that's well, not- well, That's what I'm know. saying. If, if, if you're gonna, we're gonna buy, go buy some rules, because I'm sure if I go through the market and ask all the vendors on Saturday, what do you guys think about, about a surprise and in, surprise inspection at any given time without a market manager contacting you? I'm not so sure you're not going to be too many vendors too happy about that. And if that's what you're imposing on what you're going to do, 
then that needs to be advertised. Well, if it, I mean, it's a special case situation. It's not something that's going to be, you know, every time instead of the two year, we're still doing the two year inspections, but this is in a special case scenario when something, an issue is brought to our attention. There's nothing in the rules that says, from my understanding, that, that that's not something we can do. So I, I could be wrong, but I don't see anything in here that says that. Since it's not a scheduled inspection, who pays for that? Because usually we pay for them ourselves for the every two years, correct? There is no fee for the surprise in inspection. So she doesn't get paid for that or? She gets paid through her regular so salary. It's there's no there's no fee for the surprise inspection. So she gets a salary and the inspection fee then. I don't think that the inspection goes to her at all. I think that goes okay. into vendor fees at the market. All right. I was just trying to understand how it all works. No, she is a contractor. Um, she okay. gets paid hourly and for her miles. Then why do we have to pay a $55 inspection fee? That's the vendor fee that goes to the market. I guess one thing in support of Stephanie too is that there are I mean, there are sets of rules that are established which are fairly broad and then kind of within that there's implicit that the market manager has a fair amount of latitude for interpretation and that that is there's some flexibility there for case by case stuff and that does change with market managers it does change with situations just like COVID has shown just like other things too so it's going to it will take, and it's good to bring these things up and air that, and that does get a chance of kind of maybe change some behaviors, but there's a difference in these cases between the kind of what's the explicit procedure and what's kind of the, what's done, what the policy might be. And that's within the latitude of the, the market manager. So I might suggest with this conversation that this might be more a topic since it's not at a rules-based level, but actually is more an individual between market manager and individual is to follow up in that context versus in mm -hmm. this form this may be a little too broad for that context Does that seem okay fine by me yeah duke we can talk about it on saturday if that okay. works for you yep great are there other public commentary folks not that i see all right all right, well, given all of that, it's now 618 and we'll do item L adjournment. So thank you all and this ends the meeting. All thank right. You. Thanks everybody. Yep. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.